Since the beginning of time, humans have devised all sorts of contraptions to torture and punish other humans. Let them burn for all eternity in the flames of hell. Join us as we look at the worst punishments throughout human history. 20. Impalement. In torture and execution, impalement is the process of piercing a human with an item, like a spike, pole, spear, or hook, frequently through the whole or partial torso perforation. It was especially applied in reaction to crimes against the state and is remembered in mythology and art as a very severe type of execution in many cultures. Wartime impalement was frequently employed to put down uprisings, punish collaborators or traitors, and deal with infractions of military discipline. Sometimes impalement was used for crimes like highway robbery or grave robbing, breaking state laws or monopolies, or undermining trade standards, all of which were considered disrespectful of the state's duty for secure roadways and commerce routes. Impaling offenders also occurred for a range of religious, sexual, and cultural reasons. As early as the 18th century BC, impalement is mentioned in Babylonia and the Neo-Assyrian Empire. 19. The Garrett Punishment it is known that the garret was in use in Rome in the first century BC. The instrument is depicted in some early reliefs and is mentioned in stories of the Second Catalinian Conspiracy, in which conspirators, among them Publius Cornelius Lentulus Sura, were strangled with a lachius in the Tullianum. It was also in use in Portugal and Spain during the Middle Ages. When the Americas were being conquered, it was used most famously to execute the Inca ruler Atahualpa. It was meant to be a more humane method of punishment than burning heretics who were to be quickly strangled by the Spanish Inquisition after being found guilty. Later, Garotz had an iron collar with a big metal screw at the back. The belief held that the sufferer would die instantly when the screw tightened and crushed their brainstem. The screw would just burrow into their neck while the iron collar choked him, though. If it missed the spot where the brain meets the spinal column, the pain could last for a while. Strangulation was a privilege of prominent officials and the ruling family in the Ottoman Empire. The Spanish version had a tightening collar. This one had a bowstring. Throughout the Peninsular War, French soldiers often executed Spanish guerrillas, priests, and other Napoleonic opponents with the garret. The first documented metallic garret debuted in Spain about 1810, and on April 28, 1828, the garret was proclaimed the only way that citizens were to be executed there. The last public garroting in Spain took place in Barcelona in May 1897. Everything was executed within jails after that. 18. Flagellation punishment. A flagellation, flogging or whipping is the act of striking a human body with specialized tools like whips, rods, and switches. Usually, an uncooperative individual has been punished with flogging, but in sadomasochistic or religious settings, it can also be voluntarily submitted to, even by oneself. Though other body parts can also receive the strokes, the unclothed back of a person is usually the target. The soles of someone's bare feet are the focus of a mitigated subform of flagellation known as bastinado. Sometimes the term flogging is used loosely to refer to physical punishment, such as caning and birching. But in one or two colonial areas, flogging and whipping were distinguished in British legal language. These were both outlawed in 1948 in Britain. 17. Rat torture. Elizabethan Catholic writers claimed that the Tower of London included a rat's dungeon, or dungeon of the rats. As the tide came in, a cell below high water mark and totally dark would entice rats from the River Thames. Prisoners would occasionally have their limbs and legs be ripped to pieces. William the Silent supporter, Diederik Sonoy, is reported to have utilized a technique where a clay dish full of rats was turned open side down over a prisoner's nude body during the Dutch Revolt. Rats would chew into the victim's innards to escape the heat when hot charcoal was poured on the bowl. This sounds like a barrel of fun. 16. Spanish Tickling Punishment Though it had a pleasant name, the Spanish tickler was a torture tool so keen and well-made that flesh and bones would not get in its way. Three prongs on the cat's paw shredded into human flesh. With four prongs, the Spanish tickler resembled the cat's paw quite a little. Thieves and disloyal wives were frequent targets of this gadget. Most of those subjected to this kind of torture perished later, and not at the time of the actual torture. 15. Heretic Fork Punishment Torture originated during the conflict between heretics and the authorities in medieval Spain. The victim had a weapon akin to a double-sided fork fastened to their throat. The victim was hanging from the ceiling, or in some other fashion so they could not lie down, with spikes piercing the chest and chin on one side. Usually presented to blasphemers, liars, or those who uttered the Lord's name in vain, the heretic's fork was marked, I renounce. 
In this sense, the penalty almost rendered speech impossible. One could not fall asleep while wearing it either. 14. Gibbeting Punishment Gibbeting is very particular, if not unique, in the atrocities our forefathers inflicted upon the deceased. A person that met their demise could find their head smashed upon a spike. Traitor bodies could be separated and dispersed around the country to adorn the walls of treacherous villages, following an incredibly drawn-out execution. Gibbeting chastised offenders even in their last moments, and cautioned the living. Though the 1752 Murder Act formally compelled it later, gibbeting peaked in England in the 1740s and forced the bodies of convicted murderers to be either publicly dissected or gibbeted. Some 134 people were hung in chains between 1752 and 1832. Formally, it was outlawed in 1834. When a gibbet was built, large, exuberant crowds, sometimes in the tens of thousands, flocked about it. It should come as no surprise, then, that living close to a gibbet was not a reason for rejoicing. It would smell awful. People would close their windows against the strong smell of decaying flesh when the wind blew. You can only imagine how it felt to have a body breaking down there, particularly in the early going, when there was still soft tissue. Gibbets were designed for maximum fright, not only smell, eerie creaking and clanking. They twisted and swayed in the wind. 13. The Electric Punishment Originally the most common method of execution in the U.S., Lethal injection mostly replaced electrocution in the late 20th and early 21st centuries and is currently used somewhat seldom. Through electrodes fastened to the head and legs of a condemned prisoner who is strapped to a chair, the technique delivers one or more high-voltage electrical currents to the prisoner. About two minutes pass during a normal electrocution before the prisoner dies. First used in 1888, electrocution was seen as a faster and more compassionate substitute for hanging in New York. August 6, 1890, two years later, saw William Kemmler put to death in Auburn State Prison by electric chair. The first woman to be electrocuted was Martha Place in 1899. Kemmler's much-reported execution was a hideous, flaming disaster. There was extensive charring of the body where the electrodes had been attached, according to the three doctors who performed Kemmler's autopsy. Kemmler's face was bloody, his hair and skin scorched, and the death chamber's stench was unbearable, according to a reporter who detailed the incident in a New York Times article. Still, electrocution was quickly embraced in other states, and by 1949, when it peaked, it was the means of execution in 26 states. 12. Oubliette The French word oubliette comes from the verb oublier, which means to forget. One reason it gained its moniker was that a prisoner was dumped into hole like a well and then forgotten. An oubliette was a particular kind of prison with a trap door at the top that the prisoner could not reach. Sometimes the shape of this appalling jail was like a little passageway, too small for the prisoner to sit down or even bend over. He was flogged to death, either standing or lying prone. All he could see of the grate was that it was high above and out of reach. He could tilt his head back to see what he was missing. Sometimes, oubliettes were constructed inside the walls of a castle's upper stories rather than in the dungeon allowing victims to hear and smell the life of the castle as they slowly perished from hunger in appalling circumstances. The bodies were abandoned to be eaten by animals, and decades later, several oubliettes were found to be littered with human bones. 11. Crucifixion Punishment Crucifixion was a form of capital punishment used in ancient Rome from the 3rd to 4th centuries BCE. It was one of the most heinous forms of execution used by the Romans and was therefore reserved for the most heinous of crimes. The condemned person was tied or nailed to a wooden cross and left to die slowly from asphyxiation, dehydration, and exhaustion. The practice was so cruel and painful that it became a symbol of the Roman Empire's power and brutality. The Romans used crucifixion for a variety of reasons. It was used as a punishment in some cases for crimes such as rebellion, treason, or piracy. In other cases, it was used as a deterrent to keep others from committing similar crimes. Crucifixion was also used to eliminate political opponents and religious dissidents, as well as to terrorize conquered populations and keep social order. Crucifixion was a form of public humiliation and terror, as well as punishment. The victims were frequently left to rot on the cross for days, exposed to the elements and mocked by onlookers. This public display of suffering and death was intended to deter others from committing similar crimes and to demonstrate the Roman Empire's power and brutality. 10. Keel Hauling Punishment once administered to sailors at sea, keel hauling is a kind of punishment and possible execution. The sailor was pulled under the ship's keel, either the whole length of the ship or just from one side to the other, after being fastened to a line, looped beneath the hull. The widespread assumption is that keel hauling carried a death sentence by cruel pain, or, at the absolute least, a crippling. Because barnacles and other marine flora frequently coated the ship's hull, 
Keel hauling would normally cause severe cuts from which the sufferer would later develop an infection and scars. Though this would usually lead to the victim drowning, dragging the sufferer gently might lower him enough to avoid the barnacles. Colliding against the hull or keel also carried a risk of head damage, particularly if the ship was moving. 9. Flaying Punishment Flaying is a painful and slow technique of removing skin from the body. Usually, an effort is done to preserve the skin that has been removed. For its hide or fur, or to be prepared for human consumption, a deceased animal may be flayed. Most people call this peeling. Depending on the extent of skin removal, human flaying is either a torture or an execution technique. It's common to call this flaying alive. Records also exist of people being flayed after death, usually as a way to denigrate the body of a well-known adversary or criminal. These cases are occasionally connected to religious convictions. Other times, the skin is utilized once more for ceremonial or esoteric purposes. 8. The Roman Candle Punishment The Roman candle was more of a show execution. Prisoners were tied to a stake and drenched in slow-burning flammable material, usually tree or plant resin, and then set on fire. It was apparently a favorite of Roman Emperor Nero, who was insane. He persecuted devout Christians by coating their hanged bodies with pitch, oil, wax, and other combustible substances before lighting their feet and using them as human candles. The Roman candles were used to illuminate ceremonial gatherings in the imperial gardens while also prolonging torment and misery. Elite attendees at these private meetings sought enjoyment from the suffering, while candles provided decoration and torchlight, which they deemed attractive. Today, the phrase Roman candle refers to a firework that is only associated with ancient Rome by name. The classic firecracker originated in China and today evokes cheerful childhood memories of a much-loved item, worlds away from torches of the past. 7. Knee Splitter Punishment Most of the knee splitters, a horrifying punishment, were employed during the Inquisition. This device did the knees irreparable destruction. Although the term suggests that this tool was exclusively for splitting knees, it was also used for elbows, arms, and even lower thighs. Every piece of skin in between was mutilated as the torturer gently rotated the handle. From three to over 20 spikes were included in the knee splitter. This instrument came in a lot of variations. Others had dozens of tiny claws that slowly and cruelly pierced the body. Some claws were heated prior to the torture session to increase discomfort. Although direct death was very rarely the result of this technique, if the subject refused, additional, more agonizing techniques were frequently used. 6. Scaphism Punishment Throughout history, rulers have used cruel and inhumane punishment methods to maintain power and control. Many powerful leaders have demonstrated their brutality by subjecting people to barbaric punishments, often for their own pleasure, from ancient times to World War II. Scaphism, an ancient form of punishment, was regarded as one of the most heinous ways to die. It entailed being trapped in a boat or hollowed out tree trunk and force-fed a milk and honey mixture, resulting in a slow and painful death. It was made even more terrifying using common food as a means of death. Swarms of insects, such as flies, would gather around the person within a few hours, settling in dense clouds around their face and stinging their eyes, nose, and mouth. Rats would also attack them, consuming the vomited milk and honey mixture. To make matters worse, more honey and milk were splashed onto their soft body parts, particularly the anus and genitals, attracting even more insects. These insects would bite the soft parts, bringing bacteria from their feces with them and causing infections. After a few days, the wounds would start to ooze pus, attracting more insects and breeding maggots in their bodies. The maggots would start eating the flesh, spreading disease throughout the body. Insects and other vermin would then enter the body and begin feasting on the internal organs. The victim would eventually die slowly and painfully because of multiple bites and infectious wounds. Parts of the organs would sometimes exit the body through wounds in the skin. Milk, honey, and water were repeatedly splashed on the victim's body, and some were poured into the victim's mouth, making it difficult for the victim to die of thirst or hunger. 5. Strapado Punishment Known by another name, corda, the strapado is a type of torture in which the victim's hands are fastened behind their back and a rope is slung from the wrists usually causing dislocated shoulders. To heighten the sensation and exacerbate the discomfort, the body may be weighted. Usually, this kind of torture would not last more than an hour without rest, because it would probably result in death. Other names for strapado are Palestinian hanging and reverse hanging. It was used by the medieval Inquisition, as well as several governments, including the civil court of the Order of St. John at the Castellania in Malta. Damage from the strapado technique applied correctly is permanent, but not obvious. Every victim has different degrees of agony and resistance based on their weight and any other weights they have placed on their body. 4. 
hanged, drawn, and quartered. The penalty for treason in England was to be drawn and quartered. Many consider it the pinnacle of cruel punishment, and it was reserved for the crime of treason because it was deemed more heinous than murder and other capital offenses. The gruesome punishment included drawing the convicted to the gallows, often by horse, hanging the body until near death, disembowelment and castration, beheading and finally quartering the corpse, or dividing the bodily remnants into four pieces. The punishment was administered in public, with the crowd's mockery adding to the criminal's agony. This punishment was only applied to male criminals. In England, women found guilty of treason were burned at the stake. It was first used in the 13th century and was last used in 1782, though it was not abolished until 1867. 3. Guillotine Punishment French executions in the 1700s were public affairs attended by whole towns. The quartering of a poor criminal involved tying the prisoner's limbs to four oxen, which were then driven in four different directions to rip the prisoner apart. Criminals from the upper classes might behead or hang themselves to a less agonizing end. After 1792, France widely used the guillotine as a means of carrying out the death penalty by decapitation. First proposed by French physician Joseph Ignace Guillotin in 1789, all criminals should be put to death via a machine that beheads painlessly. On September 10, 1977, the last execution by guillotine took place in Marseille, France, when the murderer Hamada John Duby was beheaded. 2. The Rack The rack is a type of torture device that consists of a rectangular, usually wooden frame that is raised slightly above the ground and has a roller at one or both ends. The victim's ankles are chained to one roller and his wrists to the other. As the interrogation progresses, a handle and a ratchet mechanism attached to the top roller is used to gradually retract the chains, causing excruciating pain in the prisoner's shoulders, hips, knees, and elbows. This roller could be rotated on its own axis using pulleys and levers, straining the ropes until the sufferer's joints were dislocated and eventually separated. Furthermore, overstretching muscle fibers causes them to lose their ability to contract, rendering them ineffective. 1. Head Crusher Early modern torture devices included head crushers. Early contemporary head crushers came in a variety of forms. A frame held the head cap to a plate that sat beneath the victim's jaw in a metal apparatus. The skull, along with the teeth, jaw, and facial bones, was crushed as the torturer gradually turned the handle, finally causing death. The face muscles and structure would have suffered irreversibly even if the tormentor had stopped before death. The victim would die as their skull was progressively crushed, but not before their jaw had been broken and their eyeballs might have protruded from their sockets. Sometimes the torture master would play about by tapping the metal cap with a little hammer to make the pain worse. A front receptacle on some versions was meant to draw the victim's attention. This type of torture sounds like the worst one on this list, but to be honest, each one sounds worse than the other. To think that human beings came up with these contraptions says a lot about our cruel nature. I'm just glad I didn't exist when some of these contraptions were used regularly. What is your opinion of these torture devices? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.